And as we come on the air tonight, the 2024 election is still anyone's race, and right now ballot counting continues nationwide. Good evening to you. I'm Scott Thuman. And I'm Michelle Marsh. 7 News is on your side with the most comprehensive and interactive coverage in the market. All day, our team has been live across the DMV to keep you informed. So let's get right to it with the presidential election. And right now, Vice President Kamala Harris has 179 electoral vote count. Former President Donald Trump just upped his number to 214. Yeah, you see the numbers right in front of you there, but there is still a long way to go in order to win. The candidate who becomes the next president must secure 270 electoral votes. Harris spent election night in D.C. at her alma mater, Howard University, and just take a look now at how many people showed up. Hundreds of supporters packed campus. 7 News' Felicia Ashley is at Howard University. Felicia, a very energetic crowd there tonight. Energetic, also sitting on the edge because every time a result rolls through, you can hear the cheers, the chants, but also some pauses depending on which directions those results are leaning. Just moments ago, we heard a huge roar through the crowd as it was projected that Vice President Kamala Harris will take the lead in the state of California. Now, right now, we are expected to actually hear from Harris in moments. She's expected to speak to the crowd right here live in the 11 o'clock hours. So we're all sitting in anticipation to hear what she has to say to the thousands of students, thousands of supporters, thousands of family members that have supported her through this process here in the crowd behind me at the Howard University. See, we are in the middle of her campus throughout the night. We haven't heard a lot from a lot of speakers. We've mostly heard music. It has been a theme of celebration here tonight, and that will continue, we expect, to the last moments of this election. For now, reporting live from Howard University, Felicia Ashley, 7 News. All right, and we'll circle back as soon as VP Harris takes the stage there. Now to the other side of this election. Former President Donald Trump is in West Palm Beach, Florida. 7 News' John Rogers is covering this campaign for us at the alert desk. John, has the former president spoken yet tonight? Not yet, Michelle. I literally just moments ago was checking his Truth Social page. He's not put up any updates at the moment, just reminding some voters over the night of when the polls are closing. Right now, we're looking at a live look now at the Trump watch party over at Mar-a-Lago. I've been keeping eyes on this people, very jovial, very happy really in a good mood as you just mentioned because things are looking good for Trump at the moment with he's standing at 214 electoral votes uh, certainly that builds them confidence but as you had mentioned there's still a lot of this evening to go so Kamala Harris can certainly gain some ground here and we're looking over at some maps that we have over at our website these are resources you can pull up too one thing that's really helping Trump at the moment are some of these swing states that we've been talking about there are seven of them in total right now some of them include Georgia, which right now is leaning towards Trump with 90% of the vote counted. Also, Wisconsin and Michigan. But again, just to remind you that we still have a long way to go. Over in Georgia, I was just diving deep into the figures here. Fulton County, the home of Atlanta, only about 90% of the votes have been counted in that precinct. Again, that's a heavily blue community. So anything can happen, guys. We're still waiting to see what happens. From DC to Earlier tonight, pro-Palestinian protesters gathered in Washington, D.C. at Black Lives Matter Plaza. Some of those demonstrators spoke out against both presidential candidates, but the large rally remained relatively calm and then quickly dispersed. Turning now to Maryland, where history has been made tonight. Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrooks is the projected winner of the U.S. Senate race. Now, this would make her the first black woman to represent Maryland in the U.S. Senate, only the fourth in that chamber's history. She ran against the state's former governor, Larry Hogan. And our Brad Bell is live in College Park tonight at the Alsobrooks Watch Party in College Park. Uh, watch Party celebration. She's already spoken. A lot of smiles there. What's the overall atmosphere, Brad? Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you, you mentioned that history was being, was made tonight. But in this room, they said her story was made tonight as Angela Alsobrooks takes the victory here in Maryland. Um, you know, look, this was a, a tough fought race, right? These were two people who actually respected each other and liked each other when they were in their jobs as county executive and governor. But the race was a tough one. But in the end, 
Maryland voters came through, as Angela Alsobrook said when she spoke tonight. She thanks the Maryland voters. Larry Hogan performed well, better than any other Republican has performed in, in recent elections, in, in, in Senate elections. But, but also Brooks did claim the victory early. We saw it. It was declared right after the first early votes and the first mail-in ballot vote um, was released. And she did speak just a little while ago. She was introduced by her daughter, Alex. And then Angela also Brooks spoke. This is a little of what she had to say. I know that we can be a country that yells less and listens more, that fears less and trusts more, where we see the humanity in each other before the hateful word. And as divided as we may feel, in America, I still believe there is no us against them. There is only us. Well, and at this moment, she is still in the room working the crowd. A lot of happiness out here in College Park. Back to you. All right, Brad, thank you. And it is a family affair for her there tonight. As Brad mentioned, among those to take the stage tonight to congratulate also Brooks was her own daughter. Here's what she had to say. She stepped into this next chapter in her life as the U.S. Senate. I have no doubt in my mind that she'll bring that same drive fighting for a better tomorrow for your families. And Maryland Governor Wes Moore congratulated also Brooks, saying the state is better because of her and now Congress will be too. He went on to say, quote, her fight is our fight. Yeah, the sign on the big screen says thank you, Maryland. And the music has remained upbeat, but within the last hour, the life has been absolutely sucked out of this room. Although the feeling that I'm getting is that a lot of people saw this coming. Many of Hogan's supporters were slowly starting to leave, even ahead of his concession speech. And there wasn't a loud sigh or any big reaction given after the AP called the race for also Brooks. Even though Hogan vowed to deliver an upset tonight, he knew all along he was the underdog in a deep blue state of Maryland. He was a popular governor, but this race held national stakes. In the end, he was up against a Democratic Party attempting to retain a razor thin margin in the U.S. Senate, meaning many Maryland voters went into their polling places ready to vote blue no matter who. In his concession speech tonight, Hogan gracefully admitting defeat and congratulating also Brooks on a historic win. Take a listen. Tonight, regardless of who you voted for, we can all take pride in the election of the first black woman to represent Maryland in the United States Senate. As governor, I had the privilege of working closely with Angela. She's a dedicated public servant, and all of us should wish her much success. Now, as for what this loss means for Hogan's political future, that remains unknown. Hogan did mention in his concession speech that the stakes were too high for him to be sitting on the sidelines. What exactly is next, though, still unknown. In Annapolis, Rebecca Pryor, 7 News. Now to Virginia, where a high-stakes election could determine the balance of power in the U.S. House. On the ballot, Democrat Eugene Vindman and Republican Derek Anderson were live at Vindman's watch party where he's speaking right now. Let's listen in. Living, strengthening and securing our border and working on continuing to fix and invest in our infrastructure in our region. I will work with everyone to address these issues together, no matter their party. Despite the deep polarization in Washington, I remain optimistic that we can still cut through the gridlock. Indeed, it's the only way forward. So there, Eugene Vindman, uh, sounding like he's declaring victory, although technically that race has not been called. 95% of the vote is in. He is up 51 to 49 percent. We also, though, have a live look from Republican Derek Anderson's watch party. That's in Fredericksburg. He told us that his top priorities are the economy, illegal immigration and veterans issues. He campaigned this week alongside Virginia's governor as well as the U.S. House Speaker. A lot of resources being thrown at that particular race. And now to Washington, D.C., where incumbent Trayon White has been projected winner in Ward 8. This was high profile because it comes as he faces a federal bribery charge to which he has pleaded not guilty. 7 News' Tom Rousey is there alive, And Tom, you spoke with Trayon at a watch party tonight. 
that's right. That watch party went on right behind me, and I did speak with White. You know, White easily won re-election here in Ward 8 tonight, despite the fact that he had not just a Republican opponent, but several write-in opponents as well. But Trayon White, he will, at least at this point, continue to be the Ward 8 council member. However, as you mentioned, Scott, he is facing a federal bribery charge that he has pleaded not guilty to. And the D.C. Council is investigating White and the end result of that investigation, council members have said could, and I do repeat, could be a vote to potentially expel White from the council over that bribery charge he is facing. Well, White told me tonight he feels the result tonight should send a message to the D.C. Council that they should not vote to expel him at some point in the future. I feel confident that the people of war they have spoken. I feel like I'm going to win by a landslide, but I'm still humble and prayerful. But, you know, I hope this is a loud message to the D.C. Council about keeping the, the decisions in the hands of the people. You know, I'm on a lot of scrutiny right now on this season of my life, but I'm forever prayerful and grateful for all God has done in my life and the people that's been supporting me along the way. And as far as why White won, he told me the folks in this ward have known him a long time and he believes they still trust him and the results tonight show that. Reporting live in Southeast Washington, I'm Tom Rousey, 7 News. Tom, thank you. We're also watching D.C. Council's at-large seats with incumbents Christina Henderson and Robert White along with two other candidates. And in Ward 7, Noah Montgomery and Wendell Felder are competing for that seat. Felder is a projected winner. All other city council seats are unopposed. All right, folks, let's give you a deep dive into the look of the balance of power in both houses of Congress. Quick look over the U.S. House. Republicans gaining ground. Obviously, though, a lot of races still left to go. Everyone is looking over at the Senate race. As of now, with the AP projections, Republicans just need to win three more seats to gain the majority. And things are looking in their favor, but again, we still have to wait to see what happens. We have some highly contested races, such as over in Montana. Republicans are hoping to switch that seat. Uh, right now, we uh, are still waiting to see the results of that race. Also, Ohio is another race that Republicans are closely watching. So these are some races that we're going to be keeping a close eye on in the next few hours, guys. All right, John, and let's check back in on the presidential race. Here is how the electoral votes stand so far as we take a look at uh, the numbers stacking up here with our virtual reality vote counter. Pennsylvania, which is still undetermined, is a critical state with 19 electoral votes. We're not really expecting those results to come in for days. 7 News I-Team's Lisa Fletcher is at Philadelphia's Secure Ballot Counting Center, where the count is underway. Election board workers started counting mail in ballots here at 7 a.m. Approximately 200,000 were cast in Philadelphia. This secure facility also tabulates ballots deposited at drop boxes throughout the city. Those started being counted at 8 p.m. and that will likely continue into the early morning hours. Here's how it all works. Mail in ballots are checked at these tables where each envelope is opened, ballots are removed, they're checked for signatures and flattened before moving on to the next stage. Election workers then feed the ballots through these scanning machines, which captures who was voted for or which issue received a yes or a no. The system automatically flags any issues preventing that scan, such as an X over the little oval that we fill in instead of filling it in with a pen. Damaged ballots are recreated, and that is overseen by election staff who follow a set of guidelines to ensure that they are remade accurately. Observers from local Republican and Democrat parties watch the entire process. The last step is to store the completed and checked ballots in a locked cage for transfer to long-term storage. Bipartisan city commissioners overseeing the ballot counting are holding press briefings here throughout the night. Top on their agenda, dispelling information circulating on social media, claiming that there is cheating at counting facilities in Philadelphia. Election officials here told us there is absolutely no truth to those allegations, that they have hardworking, honest citizens working here, and they want to give Americans the election that they deserve. In Philadelphia, at the city's ballot counting facility, Lisa Fletcher, 7 News. All right, Lisa, and back to Virginia with another important U.S. House race to talk about. This is for the 10th district in Virginia. Democratic Senator Suhas Subramanian is the projected winner now over Republican Mike Clancy. He will take over Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton's seat. She's retiring due to health issues that inhibit her speech, among other things. And earlier this year, she became the first lawmaker to use artificial intelligence or AI to speak on the House floor. Tonight, 
she used that same technology to say goodbye. And you've stood by me as I faced my battle with PSP, continuing to support me as I've worked harder than ever to keep fighting for the people of the 10th district and make the most of this platform, which I consider the honor of a lifetime. All right, quite the moment there. Uh, 7 News Nick Minock is joining us now live from Dulles. Nick, you spoke with Senator Subramaniam uh, one on one tonight. What do you have to say? He's happy, but I'll tell you one thing, Scott. There is a shocking development in this race. It's just how close it was. Mr. Subramaniam won this race by four points. And when you take a look back at 2020, Congresswoman Wexton won this district by 13 points. So quite a bit of a swing there. Uh, but, you know, Mr. Subramaniam is very excited. He won. He had his family on stage. And he was also endorsed by Republican, former Republican Congresswoman Barbara Comstock. And I asked him if he thinks he made that, that made a difference in this race. That's, here's what he said. You know, Barbara's beloved in our community still, and she did a great job. Even when people were voting against her, they really respected the work she did in the community. So I do think that she makes a big difference in any race in this area. I think between her and between Congresswoman Wexton, uh, they showed a lot of leadership, and I want to continue that legacy. Now, Mr. Supermanium is making some history tonight. He is the first South Asian going to Congress, representing a district in Congress, not only from Virginia, but also the East Coast. Back to you.